Okay, Mel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for hot skin. And everybody says, hot skin, what is that? That is something that's happened to this RV. Even though it has fiberglass walls, there are still certain places that have metal. And so if somebody had run in the construction of this unit, maybe they ran a screw or a staple and penetrated 120 volt wiring, now we've got something that's electrified. Okay. You also see situations with power cords where maybe somebody come by with a weed eater and just lance that cord open. Or maybe there might have been some water that got into something. So what we're concerned about is we want to make sure that this RV that's sitting on rubber tires, when you get a hold of the handle or you touch something on this RV, something metal, it doesn't electrocute you. How about you? But the first time I heard that, that was confusing. Hold on for a second. So here's kind of what's going on, all right? You plug into a pedestal, and that pedestal is delivering power to your RV. It's using it, and it's going back, okay? That's the flow of the electric current. So what happens is, is say you hang a picture and you drive a nail through an electrical wire, jamming it into the frame of your RV, your, your RV frame becomes energized and since it's sitting on rubber tires, it can't come out of the RV until somebody touches a piece of metal that's connected to the frame and, uh-oh, I'm getting electrocuted. Now, what we're looking for is AC volts. Okay. So we have power hooked up from the pedestal we're bringing it into the RV, so we're providing power to the unit. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for us to look for this voltage, we've got to find us a good ground. And there's three ways to get a ground. You either hook onto a metal water pipe, which we don't have, because in this particular park, all they've got is PVC or PEX tubing. Okay. Or we drive a, gr a ground stake, but unfortunately, we don't know what's below the surface here. Right. Last thing we want to do is get into some problems there. <laughs> Water line, electrical, right. you know, that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the ground of this pedestal. Okay. Okay? Because this pedestal is going to have all the voltage and it has to have a ground and that ground feeds back to the utility company. So we're getting the power from here. Now let's reference back to the ground. Okay. Okay, now this unit right here is made and all it is is a plug that we bought at one of the big box stores. Okay. We took that wire and we hooked it only to the ground prong. See that little prong right there? These other two right here, they are just there to keep the plug in its slot. Okay. It's not connected to anything. Okay, so yep. all we're after is this ground right here. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into, this particular pedestal has a ground fault circuit interrupter receptacle, and we're just after the ground. So just plug it into one of those slots and we're going after the ground that's there. Okay. okay, now we're gonna do two things. We're gonna check for our voltage. Now, you need to set up your meter for AC volts. Okay, so that's... That's voltage. Okay. Okay, on this particular meter, you see that wiggle? Mm -hmm. That's your AC signal that you're looking for. Okay. Now, while we're standing here, what I'd like you to do is to go into that small slot because that is gonna be the hot watt, the hot side of that that's, uh, receptacle. That's mm -hmm. Right there. And let's see what voltage you get. Very good, you get okay. 123, right? Okay, now we know we've got voltage and we know we've got ground because if we did not have a ground and you put that prong in there, it, the voltage would never show up. So okay. what we're gonna do now is we're gonna need to do one more test before we start our investigation. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to find a receptacle on this RV. Ideally, if you can do it outside, service bay, if we can't find anything outside, we'll go inside and get one of the receptacles there. Okay. Okay. So let's move on over to to wherever you've got a receptacle. I think I saw one. On one. the other side. Other side. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. You're going to plug into the small slot, which will be the hot side of that receptacle. Okay. Once we have verified all of our wiring apparatus is good, then we will start going around this RV. I like to start at one point and just methodically work our way around and come back to that point. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, this is a full body paint job, so we want to be real careful because I don't think you and your husband appreciate us chipping paint. Right. So what we're right. going to be looking for is any raw metal, any screw, any hubcap, any exhaust pipe, anything that would have metal exposed, that there might have been a potential that something happened. Okay. Okay. Yep. For instance, I had a client one time, they had put all those little snap buttons around the front windshield so they could put one of those sunscreens uh, down. Yep. And evidently when the guy installed the, the snap button, he ran a really long screw into oh it and he caught a 120 volt power wire. So this little snap button that was gonna hold that sunscreen 
was 96 volts. Oh. So can you imagine after That's washing fun. the coach, yeah. you hit a 96 volts? So we right. want to make sure you don't have any right. adventure like that, okay? I want that. Yeah. All right, so we'll leave it plugged into the ground. Okay. And we'll go ahead and take our wiring apparatus, because okay. all it is is just a wire, and it's hooked onto your, your meter lead on the other end. Okay. Okay? So basically what we've done is we've taken this meter, this black meter lead, which is your common, and we just made it longer by using this wire right here. Okay. Okay? Yep. Let's go. All right. Okay, now we've looked around. Sometimes there's a receptacle on the outside wall, but this one, the closest one we can find, is in the cargo bay. Mm -hmm. So here's a 120 volt cargo bay. And so we're going to be looking for the 120 volts in here. Okay. Now that 120 volts is going to be red, is going to be in reference to the ground of the pedestal. Okay. Okay. So let's see if you can plug into that small slot because that's going to be the hot this one. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. And let's see what you read there. Very good, 121.8. Okay, so what we know is, is that our connection's solid. Okay. So we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is let's just start on the front of the coach, work our way around and come back to the front of the coach. Okay? Right. Sounds good. Very good. Places like this right here, you see that raw metal right yep. there? Okay. Use the sharpness of the tip. Oh. Very good. Nothing. Okay. All right. Good. Just for the heck of it, touch that other windshield wiper for me. This one here? Mm -hmm. okay. Laid there. Uh, point zero four. That's nothing. We don't start getting excited until it starts getting over three to six volts. Like usually six volts, you start saying, okay, where did that come from? Okay. All right. Now, you see here on the windows, these little holes, those are weak holes. Okay. So water comes down. So what you do is you don't want to scrape the coating. Okay. But you want to put your probe inside there and kind of get a little bit of good contact. Uh, yep. Looking good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, we have some screws here that there's no paint on them. It's been chipped off. It's going to be okay to touch that. We just don't want to chip any paint. So, would this interfere with the reading of it? It because would because, see, that, that paint's acting like an insulator. Okay. So, even if it was hot, you wouldn't know it. So, what we're after is just to find those places. Okay. All right, let's check the, Oops, sorry. the hinge there. See how it's dragging so that you right got a little paint okay. with it? Yep, there you go. As long as you make contact with it, you'll be okay. 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 All righty. All right. Come on, Ben. Um, I don't see any screws. We would have picked up anything there. Okay. Another door latch. Okay. Now, this is a slide out. Most slide outs are running on rollers. Okay. So they're almost isolated. So we want to make sure that we check the, the slide as well as the body. Okay. So we need to find a place around here somewhere underneath that there's some exposed metal that you can touch as part of the slide out mechanism. You see a place there on that rack that you can get a hold of? So can it be? Mm -hmm. okay. Right there. Because as strange as it sounds, this this box, this slide out box, is sitting on rollers, so it may be isolated. Okay. I had a unit one time that the coach was great until I touched the living room slide and it electrified. And oh. what I found was they had one of those electric chairs that had heating elements in it, and the chair was beginning to go bad. Okay. And so the slide, you touch it, it lights you up. Okay. Okay. Just for grins, just around in here, just to see if we have anything. On the screw? Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. Point Anything zero, that's three. metal, you're going to want to touch. That isn't coated, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, mm -hmm. three. so, what exactly is hot skinning? Hot skin is really nothing more than some stray voltage that came in from the pedestal. Okay. Words, we're picking up power from the utility company through your power cord. So your 30 amp or your 50 amp. Well, you have a 50 amp power cord. Yeah. So stray voltage or hot skin is nothing more than that voltage has gotten out. Or somebody drove a staple, a nail, something through it, and it's not there like it's supposed to. I mean, it should never be there. Right. I'm saying. Because you're sitting on rubber tires, you wouldn't know it. But if you had a hot skin, because you're isolated and you're insulated because of the rubber tires, if you were barefooted out here and the ground was wet and you touched that hot skin, you'd know it. Okay. So this is the, this is what we classify a life safety issue. Oh, okay. I put okay. that in the same category as a propane leak. 